Thanks for staying with us. Now, conf confidence is flagging for power cuts to end by December following alarm bells rung by Electricity Minister Dr. Khosienzo Ramakhopa. The minister is worried about uh, production at the Quebec Power Station and about Eskom's generation capacity in general. He is confident, however, of lower levels of load shedding. So what's the big picture here and what factors will signal sustainably lower levels of load shedding or indeed power cuts altogether in the current environment? Now, Virtual Energy and Power Director Clyde Mallinson joins us live now. Thank you so much, Clyde, for your time. Do appreciate it. Now, of course, this, um, I mean, it's something that is is quite discouraging if, if really one looks at what exactly is going on. Let's start talking about, you know, Quebec's Unit 1 and Unit 2 and what we're seeing there. Well, it's a bit awkward. You know, the minister's saying that he's very worried about losing both units of Quebec at the same time. The coal fleet's not doing great at the moment. It was doing quite well in June. And yet at the same time, there's an indication that we mustn't worry about load shedding. And those two things are contradictory to a certain extent. So it's not a good idea at the moment to try and say we're going to have ended load shedding. And in fact, if we look over here, this shows us the, the energy availability factor of the coal fleet since 2016 through to 2023. And if you go to the next one, you'll see that I've zoomed in on, mm. on that particular area there. And you can... Uh, uh, and uh, hopefully then as we move on to, to, to the next slide and really as we're seeing here, I mean, this is... Yeah, is so if we just zoom in there, this. so this is 2022, that's the average. This is the availability of the coal fleet and mm -hmm. it always goes up in the winter. So it was up quite nice and high in June. It's fiddling around about there, but the overall trend since 2016 is downwards. So the coal fleet is doing slightly better at the moment. Well, it's doing what we expect it to do. You can see last year in winter, it also went up. Fortunately, last year it had a bit of a crash after going up and we had very bad load shedding. So it's definitely dropping. And still. how are we likely to see this trend go on for? Well, I think the trend is, 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 is carrying on. This actually shows us, this shows us our average monthly demand mm -hmm. from January through to July. This shows us what the coal fleet has been producing, and you can see there's an uptick in July, and this is the shortfall. So that block is showing the, the gap between supply and demand, and this is the load shedding, the average load shedding, January, February, March, April. Now the next slide shows us the peak load shedding. Mm. So if we look at the next mm. slide, we'll look at the difference between the maximum load shedding at peak times and what the coal fleet could produce. And you can see here, we're seeing figures here, and if you look at that axis on the other side, you'll see it's 5,000, which is basically st stage five load shedding. And in fact, in May, we went up to stage six, and we know we've been up to stage six in June and July. So there's a very big gap there. Mm -hmm. And of course, if Kuburg, both units are down, then the the, the, the ability to fill the difference between what the coal fleet produces and what we need will be compromised. So for someone watching tonight, let's tell them then what you've just described in relation to load shedding. What does it all mean? Well, it basically means that we have a shortage of generation supply. There's a, there's a definite shortage. And if we have a specific shortage at the same time that we have maximum demand. So a cold snap. I think there's a cold front mm -hmm. coming, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And the last time the cold front came, what happened? Yeah. We went back to stage six. And so really it's the gap between supply and demand that dictates the level at which the operator needs to drop the demand via load shedding to make sure that the, the gap is closed. And I do understand we've got a bit more slides and I'm hoping that they're going to put it up as we look at this now. So this, of course, is yet another picture. What are we seeing? Yeah, this is, a, this is a picture showing the, this is for July and it shows the average weekday usage of the open cycle gas turbines, the ESCOM ones and these private ones. And you can see they've been going pretty much in the morning peak. They mm -hmm. run at yeah. high levels. And in the evening peak, they run at high levels. Now, what's very interesting to compare this is the next slide shows us what we were doing in March with diesel usage. So if we go to the next one, we'll see the same picture, but we'll see what happened in March. 
and uh, hopefully and you can see in March we use much less now mm. the reason we mm. use much less in March is ESCOM's budget is maxed out in March their new year starts in April, in April yeah. so they basically had no money to pay for diesel so they ran a bit of diesel but you can see it's much much less than they ran or are running in July and does the picture change though well, no, the picture doesn't get, but it does change because if Coburg, both units of Coburg go off and if ESCOM starts overspending its budget on diesel, the way the picture changes is that it potentially gets worse. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we'll put then the, the final slide on this particular yes. one and you can explain to us exactly what we're seeing. I'm seeing different shades. Right. So this is, this is a slide for the whole of this year. I've made predictions about load shedding. So on the slide, if the coal fleet is behaving poorly, it's the left. And if the coal fleet is behaving well, it's on the right. So when it's behaving poorly, the, the darker the shade of orange, the higher the stage of load shedding. And when it comes to green, there's no load shedding. Okay, so we can see I've actually circled for each month where the coal fleet was performing mm. and what stages of mm. load shedding are predicted. And if you look at those, I said January stage six, February stage seven, March four, etc. And it's been more or less accurate. Not exactly, to, but, but within one level. Yeah. The scary thing, of course, is if the coal fleet in winter starts behaving like it was behaving in summer, these numbers move to here. That's the scary bit. But this was a prediction made, and it's basically just saying that the better the coal fleet performs, the lower the level of load shedding we can expect. And that's obvious, but the problem is we can't predict the performance of the coal fleet. You hear ESCOM say over and over again, it's unpredictable, mm -hmm. it's old, it's unreliable, and so we at the behest of the behavior of the coal fleet. And one certainly hopes that the coal fleet behaves and we do not find <laughs> ourselves in stage seven yes. or even eight. But yes. thank you so much for stopping by. We do appreciate it. Certainly. And giving us a sense of, you know, just how things are looking. This is quite helpful and yes. really just gives us, uh, you know, just a nice breakdown for us to understand some of what we are seeing before our eyes, but also what could be happening behind the scenes. That was a virtual energy and power director Clyde Melanson.